Could an iPad plus AI really be your ticket to a six-figure income even without coding skills? Keep watching, you're about to find out. Hey, it's Chris. You know as well as I do, the economy's not in great shape right now. We've got inflation, things are costing more than they used to. We've got layoffs happening in mass, even at big tech companies, which used to be safe havens you need a backup plan. In today's video, I'm gonna show you several ways you can turn your iPad, any iPad by the way, into a money-making machine, including ways to leverage the newest trends like AI, as well as some traditional routes that you can take as well. So whether you're a tech whiz or a complete beginner, there's something for everybody here, but before we get started, how about some inspiration? Remember that Steve Jobs once said, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Now, as an Apple user, I hope that you'll be able to muster up the same drive and determination expressed in that sentiment because with persistence and the right strategies, you're gonna be able to change your world with your iPad. Now to put things in perspective, making 100K a year is not that crazy. We're talking about three sales of a $90 product a day. We're talking about 200 subscribers paying $42 a month or billing just 12 hours a week at $160 an hour. So I've got some great ideas for you today that can help move you towards hitting that 100K milestone. And I think the fifth one that we're gonna discuss is probably the thing that's gonna bring the biggest smile to people's faces and be like, oh wow, that's really cool and I can do that. But first, a warning, if you're looking for get rich quick, kind of schemes, this is not the video for you. This is a video for people who are willing to put in the work over the long haul to make things happen and get the outcome that they're after. Let's dive in. So here I am in the app store and I got a question for you. What if your iPad could become the ultimate tool for building a profitable app even if you've never written a single line of code. The first method we're gonna talk about today is creating a no-code app using AI. So the gist here is this, you're gonna use something like ChatGPT or an alternative, and it's gonna spit out the code and the instructions for how to make that code work, how to turn it into an actual app. You'll follow those instructions and you'll submit your app to the App Store or you'll make a web app that doesn't need an App Store that just lives online and find a way to monetize it. So you're familiar with ChatGPT at this point and it does work for this method, but you could also use AutoGPT, which is a little bit newer, a little cooler, or Bubble. Bubble is a no-code app builder that doesn't use AI, so it's kind of a more traditional, conventional route if you'd prefer that. And I'm gonna link everything I'm talking about in today's video down in the description for you to check out, but here's the example for you. A guy named Josh Pigford created this Dodge Blob app using ChatGPT. He had no coding background whatsoever, and even so, he was able to create this fully functioning iOS game, which is actually pretty cool. And I'll actually link up the tweet thread where he talks about the process and how he did it. Now, the app that he created, Dodge Blob, I believe is the first chat GPT created uh, app in the app store is free. It's a free app, but what it does is it shows you the potential to build an app using this method and monetize it. Now, obviously the iPad is great for sketching things out like app mockups or dragging and dropping items and text over into chat GPT. And there's even a cool AI tool called UIZARD. I think it's a wizard and it will actually let you take a screenshot of a mockup that you've created, whether it's on a napkin or on your iPad, and turn it into a fully functioning interface. So you can see the power of combining your iPad with some of these tools. And then once you have your app up and running, how do you monetize it? Well, few options. You can have a subscription, in-app purchases, or even ads. Now let me ask you this. Could tapping into the power of niche communities turn your iPad into a money-making machine? Well, let's talk about it. Creating a CBP, or a community-based product, means creating a product that's specifically tailored to a niche community's goals and needs. So the CPB method leverages the power of a dedicated audience, and that drives the success and growth of the product or service that you create. Now I've got a really great, really recent example of this in action to share with you. There's a guy named Greg who started a community called You Probably Need a Robot, and in a very short amount of time, he built a thriving community around productivity and AI. He's gathered over 13,000 emails in something like three weeks. Pretty massive, quick success. Talk about about capitalizing on the right thing at the right time. But the iPad is an excellent place to run a Discord server, or even better, in my opinion, a Podia community. Because Podia is very much like Discord, but you own the platform, it's yours. Now, of course, the iPad is a content creation machine. You've got the Apple Pencil, of course, but you also can shoot edit and publish videos all on this one comprehensive device, which is absolutely great 
for creating community content. So how do you monetize something like this? Well, you could create a $50 product that targets the needs of your members. So think about how crazy people go for some Nikes, right? Or certain types of coffee, right? People get glued to different brands. And if you glue people to your brand and you have this community-driven, thriving member base with maybe just 2,000 members, well, if 10% of those people purchase, that means you made $10,000, 2,000 people. I mean, you could go on Twitter and within six months, easily get 5,000 to 10,000 followers. And if you get several of those people onto your community and just keep scaling this and adding more members, wow, this is a powerful way to not only do something that you love, dive into a community, create a community around something that you're really into and connect with other people that are really into it as well, but to make some money as well. Now I want you to imagine turning your expertise, your knowledge into a thriving online course business all from your iPad. So creating an online course is nothing more than creating and selling educational content based on your area of expertise or on things that you're interested in learning about that you might like to also teach to people who are also interested but are just a step or two behind you. That's a lot of people online. And the best thing about this to me is that you get to help others learn new skills and improve their own lives while importantly, while importantly also being able to build your business. And I really like the way that a guy named Dan Co puts this. He says, you find a problem, you learn how to solve it, you document how you solved it, you distill that into a replicable process and then you give it to others that want to be helped. And I also love how he phrases this, when you're finding problems and solving them offline, that's called improvement in your own life. When you're doing that online, publicly, that's called a business. Now I've actually got a personal example that I can share with you, my own productivity course, which is called Learning to Be Productive. And just like what Dan Coe was saying, this was born out of my own problem solving in my own life, figuring out how to be productive over the last several years, and then packaging that and sharing it so that complete novices in the productivity space could learn how to be more efficient with their time within the Apple ecosystem like I had been able to do while also experiencing less burnout within the Apple ecosystem and learning how to make more money and save time, obviously. Now, to give you a heads up on the potential here, the course made over $10,000 in about the first week. So lots of potential here. Now, yes, I'm a YouTuber and I have an audience, but like I just mentioned on Twitter, you can build up an audience really quickly, okay? And this is a bit of a spoiler alert, but we're baking in a community like we just talked about, CBP, or in the earlier method here, so that people can not just learn information. We're making this extra valuable to people because people don't so much pay for information, I don't think, as they pay for accountability, right? And outcomes. And the community is absolutely gonna help them go past just the learning, but actually have that accountability and get the momentum and traction in their lives. So you can see all this stuff starting to come together. Just like I've been doing in today's video, I relied heavily on the iPad as kind of a digital chalkboard or whiteboard to illustrate the things that I was talking about in the course. And yeah, I think that really added a personal touch to the course. Now in terms of monetization, you're really just needing to hit 19 sales a week to hit 100K, you know, a thousand sales times $100. This stuff really shouldn't be all that intimidating if you think about it. I know AI is coming down the pipeline and a lot of people are freaking out. Some people are refusing to use it. Uh, others are saying, what can I do that's gonna be immune from that? And whatever you're doing, you know, your job is probably going to change in the next decade. And so starting in on some of these methods now is gonna be a great parachute for you if you have to pull the ripcord later. Now, as we're looking at some of my bookmarks in my Apple content folder on Twitter, I wanna ask you, can your iPad earn you a living simply by curating the best content online? Can you become a pro curator? The answer is yes, because I'm living proof. In this day and age, there's so much content hitting the internet every day. We have so many content creators out there that there's no chance for all the great content that's out there to be discovered by people without the help of curation. When you're a professional curator, you're saving people time. You're saving them money. You're finding great things to share with an audience that cares about the things that you find and share. And I'm gonna head over here to dailytech.substack.com. That's my newsletter, which I'm gonna link up down below for you. But this is that in action, all right? Here's issue number 39, just as an example. And you can see I've got an app, an accessory, and a service that Apple fans are going to love right at the top of every single newsletter. And it has such a high open rate because this format has just worked like a charm. People love it. I also curate the Apple news for people each week and some interesting tweets that they probably wouldn't run into otherwise as well. And the iPad is just a curation machine. I've got the Reader app here, R-E-E-D-E-R, it's an RSS app, and I've got all these different Apple feeds 
feeding in so I can see all the news and I star stuff that I might want to feature. And then later on Fridays, I go through my Twitter bookmarks, my reader bookmarks, anything that I've saved to my mind, one of my favorite apps of all time, you already know if you're a subscriber. And then I go through and I cherry pick the best stuff to put in the newsletter. And people benefit from me going through and looking at all the stuff that I already enjoy looking at and sharing it with them. Now you don't have to use Substack like me. I kind of wish I had built on Beehive because Beehive makes it so easy to monetize your newsletter. They've got ads that you can just stick right in there. It's a built-in ad network. And even if you have a smaller subscriber count, you're still gonna be able to make money here without even having to worry about affiliates and sponsorships and all this other stuff. But you could also just be a professional curator on Twitter or YouTube. I mean, anywhere that you can publish content, you can be a curator, a podcast, whatever works best for you. Not uncommon at all these days for people to subscribe and pay for a newsletter that they love. If you get 10,000 subscribers paying $10 a month, you hit that 100,000 a year. All right, now we come to the method I told you to be on the lookout for before. Check out this tweet from Greg. He's actually the guy behind You Might Need a Robot. And he's got this tweet that says, I think we're gonna see many $25 million a year revenue one person businesses over the next five years. No employees, just AI, no custom code, just type form, no fancy website, just web flow, no paid ads, just community, no venture capital, just bootstrapped, high cash flow, low stress. And in the second line there, he talked about Typeform. If you're unfamiliar with Typeform, let me introduce you. Typeform is a form builder that's unlike any form builder you've ever seen or experienced before because it doesn't look like forms. It's not boring, it's interactive. You can build logic into it. So if somebody fills out the form a certain way, then they might see this. Uh, end screen, or maybe this other one, depending on their answers. And a type form form is actually sort of like an app in many ways, because it's interactive, it's user friendly, you don't need any programming knowledge to make it happen though, that's the big difference. There's so many templates on type form that you can sort through uh, with great design, that can help you get started. You can start from scratch or customize any of these. But Typeform is so powerful because you can collect user information. You can guide them through information. You can guide people through a series of questions or actions. It's all really easy to customize and you can embed these forms. Okay, well, how do you turn Typeform into a business? Well, here's what you do. You collect user info and then you offer a personalized plan. So think about what's your area of expertise, right? Maybe you're a fitness coach. You can collect people's information and spit out a personalized fitness plan. Or maybe you're an interior decorator, right? You can collect like room dimensions and budget information and maybe some samples of things that your clients like and boom, spit out a personalized plan from a remote location for these people. So if you wanna see one of these forms in action, I've got one on my productivity course. This is all stuff that I actually use. And as you can see, it's a pretty nice interface and this lets people figure out how productive they are or aren't. And based on their answers, it will actually spit out some information so that they know how they rank. So if you wanna put this into practice, how do you know it's for you? Well, can you identify a niche that would be useful, that you know about, that you would be excited about? Then you would set up a type form, capture people's information, and the key word is deliver a tailored experience. This isn't for everything, but if you can deliver a tailored experience, this works. Then you would promote it to get your clients. Now, the thing here is, you could combine this with AI. A lot of people out there are trying to capitalize on ChatGPT by making ChatGPT wrappers and having some prompt engineering, some prompt knowledge that just your average person maybe wouldn't know how to get the best results out of ChatGPT for any given thing. You could kind of turn this into a ChatGPT wrapper if you wanted, that's optional. I don't love that approach. I like when you share your own personal information and you know, you're a real human behind the form. But honestly, the sky's the limit here in terms of what you can do. 12 cells a day at 23 bucks, you know, that's gonna make it happen. All right, we're gonna cut it off here. Honestly, I could go on and on and on about business ideas, things that you could use the iPad for to turn a profit. So if you wanna turn this into a series or something, let me know down in the comments. I'll know by your thumbs up, by the views, <laughs> uh, how much you like this. I mentioned them already. Don't forget to check out the course. I'm gonna link it up down below. And the newsletter, there's so much cool stuff already waiting in the archives for you to come in and check out. But thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.